Hi, I'm Natasha Collins and let me talk to you a little bit about mental health. Firstly, why? What would I tell someone who is worried about their mental health for the first time? When you first start thinking that your mental health is off, you can feel like number one, you're crazy, or number two, that it's not a big enough deal for you to go and seek help. I would really recommend that if you feel like you can't cope, you're overwhelmed, you're worrying too much, you're anxious, or even if something has changed about your day-to-day -day life and how you're living and how you're feeling, start talking about it then and there. I promise you that you will find support and encouragement and if you speak to somebody and they don't understand then start speaking to someone else of course always speak to someone that you trust Lionheart are a great help they've helped me when I've needed to pick up the phone and speak to somebody and say hey I'm feeling really like things have gotten out of control please can you help me so don't worry, you're not feeling anything that somebody else hasn't felt before. I felt like I have had the craziest of thoughts. And when I start thinking something, I get incredibly obsessive about what I'm thinking. For example, that I could hurt somebody, that I could do something to somebody else, and it just builds up and builds up and builds up. It's okay. What you're feeling is fine. It's okay, you can talk to somebody about it who understands. And trust me, the minute you start getting help with what you're doing, then on, it opens up this whole world of possibilities that, you know, everything is going to be okay. Why do I think that everybody should care about the subject of mental health? Because mental health is something that happens to all of us. We all have mental health and it swings. It's like a pendulum. Sometimes it's really great. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes you're just, just okay. And that's absolutely fine. But we need to understand that you can't always be in perfect mental health because there's different situations and circumstances that arrive that can swing it out. Or maybe it's just something changes within and you start feeling like ah, I can't cope with whatever these feelings are. We need to be talking about that more because it's okay to have those different feelings. It's actually not normal to just be fine the whole time. So talking about it really can make that huge, huge difference. I choose to openly talk about my mental health because I think it helps other people. I stayed silent on it for so long. I can remember in my teenage years going to school and thinking like I was crazy. I would do obsessive things to try and stop thinking the bad thoughts that were going around my head. I'd constantly be chewing chewing gum or I'd constantly be rattling my leg or I'd constantly have to be like stroking my hands or stroking my head to try and be like, yeah, I'm normal. Nothing is wrong with me. And the minute I started talking about that and opening up about it, I felt so much better and I could also get help. And I let that go on for years. It wasn't until I was in my mid twenties when I started talking about that and realizing that, oh my gosh, I could have got help so much earlier. And my mental health challenges have come back in different ways over the years. For example, when I was taking my APC, it was all about obsessively doing things all the time. I couldn't have any time off from this crazy schedule that I had introduced myself to. And any deviation from that meant that I was failing. It was just that obsession to keep performing and keep doing this, that and the other. And that was spiraling into my burnout. So I want to communicate what helped me, for example, being kinder to myself and letting myself off the hook and just going a little bit easier on myself and starting taking into account well-being practices really helped me to change things around. The phrase, be kind to yourself, that one phrase, just to be kind to myself, was the one thing that made me take a step back and a deep breath 
because sometimes I forget to breathe and that alone helped me take big strides into making myself feel better and being able to cope with what situations throw at me. I've always been an overachiever, I want to achieve huge amounts of success and normally instantaneously so when it doesn't happen I'm incredibly hard on myself and so learning ways of dealing with that and speaking to people about that has really helped me ease off it means that I sleep better I work out in a more healthy way I'm no longer working out two two and a half hours a day I'm working out maybe 40 to 50 minutes a day five days a week not seven <laughs> instead so it's helped me completely change my perspective What's the one thing I learned about myself? I've learned that I am an overachiever. I pursue everything. I can work super hard without stopping to realize how far I've come. And it's not a bad thing, but I do need to celebrate myself more in the fact that I do achieve a lot. I learn how to be good at things and I do have failures along the way. I have catastrophic failures. My mum always says, you go so hard, you fall so quickly and you fall so far, but then you pick yourself up and you seem to go further than you ever did before. I'm very resilient. I've got a lot of grit in the long term, but in the short term, when things get overwhelming, I stop being able to cope. So I have to take that step back, put things back in perspective, and then I can keep going forward. So I've learned that about myself in the last 30 years, that now I actually need to celebrate what I've done, reflect a little bit more, and believe in myself that no matter what, I have the time, I have the skill, and I have the ability to work out all of the challenges that come my way. Finally, what helped me most was definitely phoning Lionheart and starting the counselling. That was the beginning of my journey to feeling better within myself, to feeling centred, to being grounded, and that was when I started to achieve the most. I had belief in myself again that I could cope with whatever was coming my way. So that one phone call at one of the lowest points in my life when I just really thought, I don't want to be in this career, I don't want to be a surveyor, I give up with everything that I'm doing, led me to counselling with Lionheart, which completely turned everything around. I started my own business, I became a lecturer, I've moved countries and now work internationally. My gosh, the confidence that has come back because I just made that one phone call when I was as scared as hell trying to figure out what the next step in my life is. So that was the turning point for me and since I've been working on being kind to myself, celebrating myself and keeping everything that I do in perspective, I've learned how to make sure that my mental health for the most part is always on track. Of course, some days I have days where my mental health feels all over the place but I work on it, I sit down, I take breathers, I take breaks I'm kinder to myself so I'm not constantly forcing myself to do things and from that I'm able to continue forward in a better state of mind than I would have done previously.